Welcome! Thank you for joining us today on the Reno Film Collective's YouTube channel. Today, we're going to get to know Taylor Reedman. Hi, I'm, I'm Taylor Reedman. <laughs> so Taylor, take us back to the early 2000s. You're on a reality TV show, you're coming off the Your Next Bus, and three facts are being listed about you. What are those three facts? Oh, what makes you interesting? Oh gosh, I, I have a large collection of, of rubber cho choker necklaces. Um, I personally organize and categorize my own journals, and I have like seven at the time, and um, I like imitating uh, fathers. Fathers? <laughs> yeah, I just think it's really funny watching fathers parent in public. <laughs> Mothers are really good at it, they know exactly what to say, <laughs> and fathers don't. Like, they, they're like trying to um, resist the urge of having like all this testosterone in them and just want to like do this to their kids but then they're also trying to be like polite but they also want to like show off to the ladies that they're like a good father in public it's just i don't know when i was in like what, early 2000s so 10 or 11 years old i just found it really fun to imitate them <laughs> do you think your eye for detail is what's helped you become such a well-established writer oh stop Boom. established um i mean i i'm I've definitely always been an observer, and uh, I think that has a lot to do with my interest in writing. Um, and it, it, I always have different ideas because of that, and I think it's also what um, motivated me to start doing improv. You do improv? Yeah. Do you perform at select times, or do you have a group that you perform with? Yeah, I perform with Reno Improv. Right now I'm on, on a team called We Digress, and then I'm also on the Killjoy Diffuser team. And we perform every single Saturday, and I help teach the playgrounds sometimes on Saturdays. And those are like open level classes, so people can come and try. Uh, but yeah, that's here in Reno. That is so cool. So obviously you're meant to be a creative. What do you do here with the Reno Film Collective? Uh, I just kind of invite myself to meetings and then <laughs> assign myself projects. Uh, right now, I'm in this really cool thing. It's like a, it's an experiment of a writers group mm -hmm. that RFC is doing, and so we're doing. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say about this, but basically, a collection of of 15 minute shorts, and I'm lead writer on one of those, and then um, I guess you would call me writer assist on, on some of the other ones. And so I'm really excited to be a part of that. And in the past, I've written and directed a couple of silly, ridiculous shorts <laughs> in the last year or so. So. That's been really fun, but aside from that, I don't know what's going to be next. Probably writing, mm -hmm. um, but I'll act in some stuff too. Oh, I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Is there one you prefer, or do you like getting to play different roles in all three? Uh, yeah, I. it's really good for my attention span, so I really like jumping all over the place. And I think writing is the thing that grounds me, and I think it helps having a background in performing. Directing is a completely new thing to me. I am not a, an expert at delegating, <laughs> or um, conveying my idea is comes pretty naturally, but helping other people um, do what I need them to do to make it happen is not is not easy for me, but there's so many people in RFC that know how to do that really well, and I'm hoping that I can learn from them. Can you tell us about one of your short films that you've made for the RFC? The, yeah, the first one I made was called Let's Break Up, and it was about this couple that's been together for 10 years, and um, they decide to break up, but one of their couple's habits together, because couples have conjoined habits as their life fuses into one is a hosting party so they decide to ho host a breakup party beautiful yeah and it's a surprise breakup party so i have a hair in my mouth and i can't locate it <laughs> <laughs> you're but, fine so when you get down to start writing do you find that it's just like like you said earlier like you were observing people and then kind of write their stories for them or do you just get some random idea in your head and you have to immediately jot it down I, I think it's a little bit of both, so I think it's really important to like constantly be open to ideas, but not necessarily be actively looking for them, just being open to what's going on around you and knowing that you can make, there, there's a million story ideas that are in your everyday life. So just like teasing those out and then putting that onto paper and then kind of exploring where that can go and that's where all the fun stuff happens. Do you have a background in writing, or is it more just like you started writing and you learned as you went on? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been journaling since I was, gosh, like four or five. Like, as soon as I figured out how to put words onto a paper, I fell in love with it and was like, Ugh! but it was very uh, derivative and 
and just, you know, today this happened to me, like screw such and such for cutting me in line, whatever, like stupid childhood stuff. But then I, it kind of followed me and I ended up getting a degree in English and then I got another degree in theater. So th that's kind of how those like fell together. And now I'm focusing more on, on that's where fiction started to happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know a lot of creatives, once they are finished with their project, they release it out, they let everybody else see it, and then don't return to it. Do you find that's a rule for you, or do you find yourself often revisiting some of your past works? Like your journals, or like your older films? Journals are really scary to revisit, <laughs> because you realize how melodramatic you are, or I am. And oh no, we're on the same boat. I read some of my old things, and I'm like, ooh, well, I was Especially terrible. in a journal, right? Because yeah. it's like your space where you can say all the dark things, and it's where you're your everything is uh, so it's that's a terrifying place to go and I am not so great about revisiting my stuff afterward but I don't think there's necessarily been enough time in between projects I haven't given myself enough time in between projects to even consider going back to them mm -hmm. I kind of just learn what I can from them and decide that I want to try a new idea and I think that's why I'm so involved in improv and why, why that's so exciting to me is because after before every show you have no idea what's going to happen on stage and then when you get off stage you never have to do it again <laughs> and I think a little bit of that mentality has fallen into the way that I write scripts but I would like to get to a space where I'm devel developing them more okay. uh, I want to do that right now I'm just learning from each new each new story that I create uh, but yeah I want to make that part of my process great so what are your goals, well two questions, what are your goals for yourself in RFC and what are your goals to make RFC better? I want to keep giving scripts to people and <laughs> just writing them and then giving them to other people to interpret and direct and, and, and create into a universe. I think that's really where my, my focus is right now and if it makes sense for me to be a, an actor or a character in one of those then I will definitely do that too. And, and I'm also open to doing some directing for people that have written that, something that I haven't written because mm. I think it's important to be able to practice conveying your ideas to other people and then making it happen in a collaborative space and that's like such a beautiful thing that RFC gives is so many people that just want to learn and they're constantly learning and so we're all switching around roles and and I, I want to see that grow. I want it to become this thing where people that don't aren't even when they come and visit Reno, they know about this and they want to jump in for a film something event one week just because they're here. Mm -hmm. You know, they just know that it's just like this open organic space where we make film and come if you can. And if you're really awesome and stuff, definitely come. If you're a learner, also definitely come because you're going to learn a lot. For the people who are watching who maybe haven't seen any of our film something videos, can you tell them kind of what the process is and maybe one of your fun experiences while doing a film something event? So I haven't been there in the action of writing it or uh, making it happen, but I've been right, right now I'm in the process of doing the editing for some. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, how I understand that it goes down is they, they write something and they film it in the span of like half a day. And usually it ends up being like a one, two, three minute piece. But the idea is to just quickly get an idea out and produce it so that way we can learn as quickly as we can. It's kind of like that expedited learning thing. So my process right, or my participation in that right now is editing. I'm learning how to do that. And do you like editing? I know a lot of people do, a lot of people don't. What's your what's your take on editing? Uh, so far so good. <laughs> it's, it's crazy that for, uh, I, I mean, I'm used to writing with just words and now getting to edit with images uh, it's a whole different experience and I can really get in like a zone with that and I'm excited to see where that takes me. I'm not thinking too far ahead. <laughs> Which is absolutely fair. Yeah. Well, obviously I have to ask, what movies kind of influenced you growing up or that inspired you to make the kind of movies that you want to make? Oh, okay. So when I was little, little, I watched Mary Poppins over and over and over again. That was my jam. I thought she was like so powerful but also feminine. So mm. I think characters like that are really exciting to me and then also anything that Wes Anderson and Tarantino put out I know that probably sounds like super cliche but I have a theater background and I find it really exciting when you can take something to a theatrical level whether it's 
that's the scenery uh, or setting or the transitions or even character reactions and make them theatrical as a, and put it on film. Because I think there's that big dichotomy a lot of the time where film is like naturalistic acting and it's, it's as real as you can possibly get it, but it's so flavorful and just exciting when you can see the theatrical elements find their way into mm -hmm. film. And I want to play with that at some point. It's a little more expensive, but I want to try. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, so our producer Eddie is telling us that we need to wrap up. Is there anything you'd like to say to the people at home? Kind of inspire them, get them going, get them motivated, get them to join the RFC? Oh, people that want to join the RFC, just call Eddie and he will put you to work. <laughs> That's really all you have to do. You have to have some sort of minor interest in what, what you want to do and have a little bit of flexibility and in to try to do different things. And suddenly, maybe a year, maybe six months later, you'll you'll decide that this is like the coolest thing in the world. Because it took me like half a second to decide that, <laughs> but uh, it might take you longer. I don't know. That's I don't know if that's even helpful. Just call Eddie. <laughs> I'm sorry, he has an assistant now. Call Eddie's assistant <laughs> and she'll put you to work. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. People at home, thank you so much for watching. And Eddie, thank you for being awesome. Eddie's Bye. awesome. <laughs> I'll stay here forever. <laughs>